Two books that were very helpful on the journey to actualizing my visions were number one, The Quantum Leap Strategy by Price Pritchett, and number two, The Compound Effect by Darren Hardy. Today, I'd like to discuss how I've been applying these books in a way that's beneficial for you. As I always say, what we put our attention on, that is what we give life to. In other words, life appears through our attention. Thus, it is key to keep our attention on what is desirably related to our vision. So I titled today's conversation mind map, Flow-Based Progress. The premise of our conversation today is daily commitment and being open for opportunities. Today's conversation was inspired by a number of questions that I received in regards to the two conversations that I had released on this channel over the last few weeks. Number one was with Ed Barrigo and how he built his business to success, earning over $200,000 a month. And then also, last week, I released a conversation with Ruben Brooks, who also built his business to $150,000 plus a month. And they continued to increase their earnings as a result of two things that I would like to focus on today, which is actually related to the video that I released on Tuesday. So two things I'd like to focus on today is daily commitment and being open for opportunities. And for daily commitment, I want to refer to a book called The Compound Effect by Darren Hardy. And being open for opportunities, I want to refer to a book called The Quantum Leap Strategy by Price Pritchett. Now, relating this over to Tuesday's video, we discussed Think and Grow Rich primarily is about auto-suggestion and the subconscious mind. That is the way that I relate to the book. Three chapters that were very helpful for me in thinking Grow Rich were the chapter on auto-suggestion. This was the first time back in 2004 when I was introduced to the idea of auto-suggestion, that you could suggest something to yourself from the premise of having that, and then you go on to experiencing that. Number two, the subconscious mind. We suggest to ourselves, and this impresses the subconscious mind, the infinite intelligence within the subconscious mind takes that impression and some way, somehow externalizes it for you. And then also the sixth sense chapter, intuition, hunches, plans, and inspiration are received within. We apply these plans and we produce success. Such was the case with Ruben, such was the case with Ed, such was the case with my experiences on my entrepreneurial journey. So it's the daily commitment to these plans plus being open to receiving this intuition within that I would like to further discuss today. Now, three points of emphasis all throughout this video. Number one, gradually releasing control. Now, control or trying to unnecessarily force or control things is a result of identification to beliefs that result in the appearances or experiences of trying to control or force. Number two, committing to each step, daily commitments, compound effect on the journey to actualizing your vision, each step of your plans from a state of flow. Why we do this specifically from a state of flow rather than a state of stress, frustration, which is, again, identification to specific beliefs in mind that result in stress and frustration. Why we do this from a state of flow is because this allows our mind to be open for opportunities and possibilities. Opportunities for exponential results. For example, in the earlier stages of my entrepreneurial journey, I had a number of tasks to accomplish, complete projects for clients, provide certain quotations for clients, reach out to prospects. I set a goal to reach out to a certain number of prospects a day. Until this day, when I work with everyone, we set a quota. Ideally, 
depending on their business. If they have a large team, they have a big infrastructure, but they have sales reps, then we set a higher number. But if they are the one that is operating the business, usually it's something like reaching out to five new contacts a day for the following reasons. Number one, to acquire clients, and not necessarily in this order. Number two, to reach out to those that could refer business to you. And number three, opportunities for joint venture or strategic alliance partnerships. I go into detail on this in my entrepreneurial program, which I'll link to in the description. So these are the steps they commit to, to actualizing the vision. Now, in my earlier stages, I had tasks of these initiatives on my task list, and that was back in 2009. Now, what I noticed was opportunities would show up unexpectedly, and then I would take those opportunities. For example, I had an insight one day. I said, what if I connect with those that have masterminds in Toronto? Because my IT business was servicing clients in the Toronto area. And so I figured, well, you know what? They might know business owners. If it's a mastermind group, and in this mastermind group, there are other business owners in the area, local area, then if I join one of these mastermind groups, which was an online mastermind group, it was a Facebook mastermind group, by joining it and taking it a step further, by building a relationship with the person that runs the group, then perhaps I might allow for some opportunities to arise, putting myself in a position where there are more opportunities. And that's exactly what happened. So I ended up building a relationship with the founder of this group, we connected, we met up for coffee, and we worked out a referral deal. I would refer business to him for a percentage. He would refer business to me for a percentage on the deal. He introduced me to a client who then introduced me to other business owners, and the business started to grow. So daily commitment to the tasks on the list from a state of flow and being open to opportunities. Thus, number three, allowing the space for opportunities to arise. I find that when we operate each day from a state of flow, we allow those opportunities to arise. Otherwise, a person might be identified with overthinking, mental chatter, and not allowing themselves to see the opportunities that are already in front of them right now or allowing them to arise. So, the compound effect, the book, is about small, smart choices plus consistency plus time equals radical difference. So each day, we have an opportunity to choose what tasks, what projects we engage in. I always recommend the highest leverage tasks in relation to actualizing your business success. Usually, that tends to be sales, marketing, and innovation. Sales because this is what brings in the business. Number two is marketing. Bringing awareness to the product or service. Bringing prospects over to a phone call in which you can have a conversation with them or a Zoom call in which you can have a conversation with them so you can offer your product or service. You also gain valuable insights from marketing and selling to further innovate your products or service, create new products or services, or optimize your existing products or service so that it could better serve those that you're interested in serving. That's one of the reasons why I recommend investing more time in marketing, sales, and innovation. Having more conversations with people so you can understand their needs, pains, desires, frustrations, so you can create wonderful products and services that can benefit them. Now, if one invests more time and energy in these areas like Ed and Ruben did, your business starts to grow. Then you can optimize it 
by hiring salespeople, bringing on marketing teams to further scale those initiatives so that you can acquire more clients. And as that is happening, you are optimizing your operations so you can fulfill those client commitments and provide wonderful quality, quantity, and spirit of service and further optimize that quality, quantity, and spirit of service. So for me, each day, I have a task list. I use the software Trello. I put my tasks and my projects in there. And what I do is I commit to each task and project, sequence it in priority sequence, which is usually for me facilitating deals as well as creating content. When I had my IT business, it was more on finding ways, creative ways to orchestrate referrals. Number two, having more sales conversations. And number three, fulfilling on the client's service. Not necessarily in that order, but that was primary. I stopped doing things eventually that I noticed were not worth the time. They weren't producing as much results. There were initiatives that I would not consider to be high valuable utilization of my time, my energy, my resources, and also the relationships. Because what I would like to do with everyone when I'm working with them, be it their clients, vendors, staff, any shape or form, is come up with the mutually harmonious initiative that we can move forward with, that we can benefit each other with. It could be, let's say if they're a vendor, What's the deal that we can facilitate where we can bring more business to them? They can also maybe bring business to us. We can harmonize in a way that they could provide that solution, whatever it is that I'm looking for in a way that's easier and faster for them. And also we can optimize it along the way. Perfect example was there were times with clients where we worked with marketing firms and these marketing firms would provide solutions. It could be Instagram ad campaigns or something like that. And what I would do with the clients is I would set up a weekly call with that marketing team, that agency, and we would explore what was it that they did, the data, the numbers, and we would come up with key insights that they could implement to optimize our campaigns. And they were proficient at it, so they was plenty that they could contribute to the conversations and also what we can do internally as in the company I was consulting and I would ensure that it was nicely organized in a way that was mutually beneficial and so the client was very clear on what their steps were and the vendor is very clear on what their steps are and then the campaigns began to optimize nicely so these were high level initiatives that I was involved with and I still am involved with to some degree each day. So performing these initiatives each day consistently with time, these are smart choices as he referred to, even if one might not see it as a big step towards actualizing the business success, eventually leads to actualizing the business success. For example, if you're a real estate agent, and I've worked with a number of real estate agent firms, if you set a goal to reach out to five new prospects a day, maybe within a month, your first month, you don't get many clients. But as you continue to optimize your skill, your consultative selling skills, your marketing skills, your communication skills, public speaking, you start to increase your conversion. That means you find creative ways to find even more of the exact prospects you're looking for, the various sources. You also find creative ways of engaging with them in conversation. You also optimize your conversations. And I created a communication program for this. I'll also link in the description to it. Optimize your communication so it increases what we call conversion or client acquisition percentage, converting a prospect into a client. Then over the course, you'll notice that your sales increase because you have improved in this ability. And when you do it from a state of flow rather than a state of force and stress, 
you cultivate the skills, and you also allow for opportunities to arise. Which brings me to the book, The Quantum Leap Strategy. Keys that I'd like to emphasize from this book today. Suspend disbelief. Number two, focus on ends rather than means. And number three, rely on the unseen forces. So suspend disbelief is in relation to the vision. And it's easier to suspend disbelief if you have accepted the end through auto-suggestion. In other words, you've impressed on the subconscious mind that your vision is a fact in imagination. Because once that's impressed on the subconscious mind, and again, watch the video I released on Tuesday, where we discussed this extensively with a lot of nuances. Three hours plus we discussed this, saying the same thing many different ways to emphasize the simple point that when an impression has been made upon the subconscious mind, you are now oriented to actualizing that vision. In psychocybernetics, this is referred to as the servo mechanism. Now, on the journey to actualizing the vision, beliefs may be triggered in relation to sales, in relation to marketing, in relation to innovation, finance, operations, leadership. That's how I like to categorize entrepreneurship as articulated in my entrepreneurial program, which I'll also link to in the description. Now, there is no problem with you because you transcend these beliefs. One may be identified with these beliefs, but these beliefs are not truly you. Who you truly are is love, happiness, peace, bliss, and fulfillment. And thus you can experience your true nature on the journey to actualizing your vision. If you react to an experience which is corresponding a belief with it, you can bring awareness to these beliefs and release identification to them, which I cover extensively in my subconscious mind program, which I'll also link to in the description. I actually created those five programs, the entrepreneurial program, the mind mapping program, the productivity program, the communication program, and also the subconscious mind program as a full solution for entrepreneurs, career professionals, sales professionals, and there are applications outside of entrepreneurship that those programs are applicable for. It was based on over 20 years of applying this information successfully, moving up in corporate, getting out of debt, building three successful businesses, and helping others like Ruben and Ed also build business success. It is a process and one that could be joyous, such as the case with the compound effect, which is again, small, smart choices, plus consistency, plus time equals radical difference. Now, I acknowledge that some want to do a lot of different things in life. You want to accomplish many goals. Yet, if you choose a few that you can apply this to and see them all the way to fruition, in other words, actualize those visions, what you will learn is how to actualize any vision. Take an, an idea, a desire, accepted it as already done in imagination, left an impression on the subconscious mind, and then gone through the exact journey that is precise and accurate for you to learn and grow on, to actualize that vision. And part of that is on the journey if you're identified with beliefs that result in doubt, uncertainty, or fear, you know how to bring awareness to these beliefs and release identification to them with auto-suggestion, self-talk, meditation, or any kind of modality that works for you. I don't consider one better than another. I use whatever works, and I recommend according. Building this relationship with yourself is what happens on the journey to actualizing your vision. Now, in the context of the quantum leap strategy, every now and then, you may be presented with an insight, a hunch, or an inspiration to make a bold move. For me, at the time when my IT business was in the position of growing it to the next level, in which I had the infrastructure and partnerships in place 
to take that business to the next level, I realized that I did not want to do it anymore. There was no longer a desire to go in that direction. The desire did arise to go into consulting. I felt it in my heart. That's what I truly wanted to do. Because having actualized many definite chief aims as this journey really started for me in 2004 with Think and Grow Rich, I realized that if I feel it in my heart that I want to do something, and it's something that I genuinely want to do, I'm going to go do it. I'm not going to question it. I'm not going to doubt it. Because I no longer have identification to beliefs that results in those questions. And it's not to say that those questions are not valid. They can definitely be valid. I actually recommend having a conversation with yourself or a trusted advisor to bring those questions to peace, as in there's nothing wrong with you for questioning. I encourage questioning everything. So when you question something, you find the answers within, or you work with somebody, and you're able to bring those questions into the answers. As a matter of fact, you realize that the question is actually complete with the answer. So in other words, you bring yourself to a higher degree of self-leadership and self-reliance. Now, when you do not have identification to those beliefs, it's easier to suspend disbelief and make that bold move. And so I took the bold move. I just said, you know what? I'm not going to do this anymore. I transitioned my clients, and then I decided to go into consulting, freed up everything. As a matter of fact, I got rid of a lot of things, pretty much almost everything that I owned, even though I didn't need to. I just chose to do it because I felt that by freeing up, by clearing up the physical clutter, I can allow my mind to be free. Now, that's my way of doing things. That may be your way of doing things. That may not be your way of doing things. As I always say, listen to yourself and trust yourself. So what ended up happening then was I ended up booking a flight, a one-way flight to Europe. And the idea arose to start this channel. And also the idea arose to connect with certain people who facilitated the growth and success of that particular consulting practice. As a matter of fact, I had, and I look back at the analytics, under a few hundred subscribers on my YouTube channel, yet the YouTube channel in the first year was earning six figures. Why is that the case? I was open to opportunities and I took the opportunities. So if you go back to my channel in the earlier stages of the channel, you'll see a video called Five Insights from a Podcast in which I shared five insights from a podcast that I watched called the I Love Marketing Podcast. Jeff Moore, he was on there as a guest on the show. And on there, he shared some valuable insights, which I put in that podcast. And then I said, you know what? I'm going to share it on my YouTube channel. I posted it on my YouTube channel. And then I had this idea arise in my mind, as mentioned. Ideas, hunches, and inspirations appear within as you keep your mind open for opportunities. So I had this idea of tagging him on Facebook. At that time, I had a personal Facebook profile. I tagged him on Facebook. We weren't friends. He didn't know who I was. He shared my video, and we ended up connecting, and we ended up working out a consulting deal for his business. And not only that, he also referred me to a number of businesses. So between all those deals that came from that, the first year was a six-figure year earnings from the result of the YouTube channel. And the channel had less than a few hundred subscribers. So anyone can do this by applying what we're discussing here. And again, get into the nuances of what was discussed in Ruben's video as well as Ed's video because many have reported to me that what was shared in those videos was so profound and insightful that it concretely and directly resulted in optimizations that produced results in either sales marketing, operations, leadership, or finance. Practical. So watch those videos. And we all started from a similar background. We had identification to many restrictive limiting beliefs, which are not true and authentic to how we are. Now, in the quantum leap strategy, it's encouraged that we make bold moves. And here's how I apply the book. In the earlier stages, I used to have a lot of resistance to making a bold move that would arise. Let's say I had an idea like that. I would have a lot of resistance. And there's nothing wrong with experiencing resistance. 
That's normal when you're moving in a direction that triggers some of those beliefs that are identified with or a belief that is identified with, which is resulting in that resistance-based experience. If you bring awareness to that belief and release identification to it by not identifying with it in some shape or form through auto-suggestion, self-talk, etc., you suspend disbelief and you take what he refers to as the bold move, the quantum leap. And Ruben, Ed, and I have spoken about many bold moves that they have taken along the way. And there were times on my journey and many that I've spoken with where there was resistance prior to taking that bold move. We simply transmute that resistance. A good book to read is The War of Art by Stephen Pressfield, which is essentially not running away from resistance, but by embracing it, falling in love with the resistance. We actually transmute it, similar to the burning desire as Napoleon Hill articulates in Think and Grow Rich. Again, we discussed it in Tuesday's video, which I'll link to in the description. Now, he also says, focus on the ends rather than the means. So when you focus on your vision, when you look at the end vision, you ask yourself the question, who am I at that end? What am I doing? What are the kinds of things that I'm involved with? And then from there, you discover the projects, tasks, that are the key initiatives. And you commit to each one of those from a state of flow. And what happens is you automatically focus on the end. You allow the subconscious vision, which has been accepted as true via auto-suggestion, to be the focus. And thus you're then automatically focusing on the end rather than the means. And the means that appears step by step is deeply engaged with from a state of flow. And so you're not worried or overly concerned or overthinking about all these different things that have nothing to do with now. Now is where all the power is. Now, when it comes to making a bold move, whatever that is to you, in that moment, we might experience thoughts, doubts, emotions being experienced in a particular way, worrying about the means. In that moment, abide in the stillness. Your true way of being is love, happiness, peace, fulfillment, bliss. You are already whole, complete. You have everything. And from that stillness, you find it's easier to take that step. Number three, rely on the unseen forces, which is the premise of all that we talk about on this channel. It's one thing for me to say to you, just allow the unseen to take care of everything for you. But some questions may arise in mind, and those questions are totally normal. You may have a conversation with those questions and bring them to peace, reconcile within, or you may have a conversation with a trusted advisor where you can bring those questions into peace rather than suppressing or denying or repressing the emotions. And what ends up happening then is you allow fluidity of mind. You remain in your flow. You allow those opportunities, such as the ones that I mentioned earlier, to arise. So in summary, select a goal or a vision and commit to it by impressing that on your subconscious mind from the premise of already having auto-suggestion. When that impression is made, you allow things to happen. Allow things to happen by committing to the plans, knowing that's in harmony and in contribution to actualizing your vision. For example, with Ed, it was his marketing campaigns. It was building his team. It was servicing his clients. The same was with Ruben. The same was with me. Those were the initiatives in which we commit to with deep engagement and value the compound effect. Because while we are valuing the compound effect on the day-to-day -day journey to actualizing the vision, we experience what I call optimization data. We can find ways to optimize our sales, marketing, operations, leadership, finance, invention, innovation. Those arise naturally on the journey to actualizing the vision. 
ideas, hunches, inspiration received within during the journey of actualizing the vision easily more so when done from a state of flow. That's why I encourage it. This has been my experience for myself. This has been my experience working with thousands of others. And this is the experience that also those that I know that perform services like consulting who work with many people who have also shared with me, although they may say it in a different way. So now, then a bold move or an insight may arise, which is the quantum leap strategy, to take that step. As the mind is purified from being this way, it's easier to take that step. If the mind has not been purified, in other words, there's resistance to taking that step, bring awareness to the belief behind the resistance and release identification with it. This can be done easily with self-talk. I did a video recently on sleight of mouth language patterns by Robert Diltz. I'll link in the description to that video. I trust you'll find that to be very helpful because you could speak to yourself in a way where you listen to yourself, trust yourself, and not unnecessarily deny, suppress, or repress emotions. And you could do this with yourself. You could do this with someone who's very proficient at doing this as well, which I also recommend. And what this allows you to do is implement everything that we're talking about here. Pick a goal or vision, commit to it, take the steps, the few steps that are higher leverage each day, commit to them each day on the journey to actualizing the vision, do it from a state of flow, acknowledge that small, smart choices plus consistency plus time equals radical difference. For example, if you are interested in improving your cardiovascular health and you started running, maybe you run today and you feel tired after running for 30 minutes and you can only run at a certain speed, only get to a certain distance, that's fine. Nothing wrong with you. You do it again and again according to the schedule and you notice that you make progress. There may be times where it doesn't appear that you made progress. We still stay committed to it. There's times where it may appear that you made a lot of progress. We stay committed to it. There's times where it appears that we made incremental progress. We stay committed to it. And as we stay committed to it, we eventually actualize our vision. Then also, on the journey to actualizing the vision, we get these bold ideas that may pop up in mind from the source, all arise from the one cause, the source within, and appears as and appears animated by that source to actualize what was revealed within, in your imagination, that vision. We allow it to happen. So now is where all the power is. Now is where you can apply this. Now is when you can make flow-based progress on the journey to actualizing your vision. So I trust you found this video to be helpful. Let's conclude this with an auto suggestion to further encourage. You could say, every day in every way, I actualize my vision by valuing each step on the journey by performing the initiative from a state of flow. Through this way of being, I allow the infinite intelligence within me to take care of everything for me during the initiative and also in relation to aspects outside of current conscious awareness that are moved and moved in harmony as I allow it to move in harmony to contribute in unknown ways to actualizing my vision. Ideas, hunches, and plans are received with it that transcend the gradual progress and produce exponential results which is a combination of compound effect and also unconventional ways that arise in which it's easier for me to move forward with them as I remain in my state of flow. If you would like a copy of this mind map, the link is in the description. Thank you very much for watching. I'll talk with you soon. Take care.